Investigations continue into what led to a fiery crash in Trelawney on Thursday. A policeman who died as a result has been identified as Marlon Smith. Sandy Williams reports. This is what's left of the service vehicle in which Marlon Smith was driving in Trelawney Thursday. Mr. Smith was the Close Protection Officer, CPO, for Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. They were approaching the corner when their vehicle picked up a slide. And um, the most I could do was just to press on my gas so to avoid them to hit in my vehicle door. So their vehicle hit the back of my vehicle. There was a trailer behind me um, that was bringing a few units on the back. So the trailer hit into their vehicle, went over the, the little ditch, and then there was a fire. Mr. Smith died in the fiery crash. Finance Minister Dr. Clark was not with his close protection officer at the time of his death. An eyewitness believed the crash was the result of the wet road. When rain fall, you know the road simple. Worse, once it drew, once it drew. You see, if it fall hard, it better for everybody. I wash off the little grease from the on the road. But Up to late Thursday night, the police and fire personnel were still at the scene. Since the start of the year, 226 persons have been killed in 203 fatal crashes. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Residents of Rodney Hall in Black Hill, Portland, say they are finding it difficult to survive due to bad road conditions, lack of piped water, and no street lights in the area for years. As Sandy Williams reports, the Portland Municipal Corporation is refuting those claims. Plagued with challenges, life in the Rodney Hall community has been difficult for residents. The residents claim the community has been without piped water for 20 years. While admitting that the municipal corporation had been trucking water to the area, the people say that stopped four months ago. The lack of water has been a burden to householders who claim they have to be forking out thousands of dollars to buy water. If I get a car, a taxi, we get some water. I'll try to close and five jobs. You understand? If you get a bike, man, I'll try to close two hundred dollars by the job, then we carry. So it costs enough money, and you know, say, the time hard and carry on about it, you know, and things and stuff like that. Think of that. We now work more than so. We have to sell two mango, I sell two swasa. We now have the money to buy some water and stuff. Then. They also complained about the poor road condition. They claim the road has been in a deplorable state for more than a decade. From 2002, them road, I said, they maintain. You know, see nobody I come maintain them again, you know. So right now, when you look on the road, you can't see it for yourself. The whole I drain them black up. Bush, I pan them more than what you can think. This is a light. We need some, you see that? The boom off the last time, you know, what I call it? Boom off. Boom, boom off I post. For your gas, everybody free to leak out everything, current leak out. You understand? So, I mean, we need some help. The Portland Municipal Corporation, which is responsible for water supply in the area, is refuting the residents' claim that there has been no piped water for 20 years. Chief Executive Officer at the Council, Jennifer Brown Cunningham, says a minor water supply serves the community and its environs. So we, we are not able, most of the time, there's not a 24-7, 365 day supply. The systems um, are intermittent. Um, persons, the, the, the charge is $600 per household. The, the systems are not metered. But we do the best job we can to ensure that the citizens do have water and are serviced. If water is not there, the municipal corporation trucks water as well. So I am not sure where the report is coming from about not having water for the last 20 years. Um, that is not my information. I have checked. As for the poor road condition and defective street lights in the area, Mrs. Brown Cunningham says no reports were made to her office. She explains in order for the matter to be addressed, a request must first be made to the council. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett. 
In the world of business, MasterCard has created a digital identity DI ecosystem as a multi-layered protection approach to security in light of increased cyber fraud. According to MasterCard, this will allow both institutions and individuals to make fast, easy and reliable transactions while reducing the risk of fraud and identity theft. According to a 2020 report from internet security firm McAfee, cybercrime cost the global economy one trillion US dollars, or just over 1% of global GDP. The COVID-19 pandemic pushed 4.7 million people out of the middle class and into vulnerability or poverty in Latin America and the Caribbean last year. According to a World Bank report, the pandemic reversed decades of social gains. Over the past two decades, the number of people living in poverty in the region fell by nearly half. Growth stalled in recent years, and the region has been one of the hardest hit in health and economic cost during the coronavirus pandemic. In 2020, the middle class fell to 37.3% of the population, the vulnerable class rose to 38.5%, and the poor made up 21.8% of the population in Latin America and the Caribbean. Kingston Wharves has seen an increase in its motor unit business. According to Kingston Wharves CEO Mark Williams, the increased activity was a result of six large pure car carriers, PCC, within the last 72 hours, totaling over 5,000 motor unit moves. That's more than the numbers handled for the entire month of June in 2020. Mr. Williams says it's the first time the company has seen this many auto liners call on the terminal in such quick success session. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And we now head to a quick break, but when we come back, Simon Preston will have your midday sports. Welcome back. It's now time for midday sports. I'm Simon Preston. Two-time 100m Olympic champion Shelly Ann Fraser-Price will line up in semi-final two of the women's 100m at the National Senior Championships this evening. Fraser-Price will go up against the likes of double Olympic champion Elaine Thompson-Hero and multiple World Championship relay gold medalist Natasha Morrison for one of three spots to qualify for the final. Semi-final one will feature double world under-20 sprint champion Brianna Williams going up against the likes of Sharika Jackson, Ashanti Moore and Natalia White. The semi-finals of the women's 100 meters are slated to commence at 6.25. The men's equivalent, which is set to feature the likes of Johan Blake, Julian Fort, and former Calabar athlete Oblique Seville, is set for 6.45. The men's final is set for 7.35, and the women's final at 7.25. Live coverage of the National Senior and Junior Championships can be seen on TVJ, TVJ Sports Network, and OneSpotMedia.com. To cricket we go now as three Jamaicans have been included in the West Indies women's squad to face Pakistan in three T20 internationals in Antigua next week. Jamaican Stefani Taylor skippers the side and is joined by countrywoman Chanel Henry and Shadeen Nation. The rest of the squad reads Vice-Captain Anissa Mohamed, Alia Alain, Shamilia Connell, Brittany Cooper, Deandra Dottin, Kaisia Knight, Kishana Knight, Haley Matthews, Karishma Ramharak and Shakira Selman. The first T20 bowls off on Wednesday. The tour will also comprise of five one-day internationals. To football we go now as the Reggae Girls remain third in the June edition of the CONCACAF Rankings Index. Earlier this month, the Reggae Girls clipped African champions Nigeria 1-0 and fell 4-0 to World Cup champions the United States. The United States continues to lead the index followed by Canada. Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago and Costa Rica round out the top six. The 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup qualifiers are slated to kick off in November, with CONCACAF region having four automatic spots to Australia and New Zealand. The fifth and sixth place teams will head to the intercontinental playoffs. And finally, this afternoon, 15-time winners Uruguay have advanced to the quarterfinals of the Copa America after blanking Bolivia 2-0 in Brazil on Thursday. Uruguay took the lead in the 40th minute through an own goal from Bolivian defender Jairo Quinteros. Manchester United forward Edinson Cavani made it 2-0 in the 79th minute to secure their ticket to the last eight of the competition. In the other game on the day, Paraguay got past Chile by the same scoreline. Argentina, Paraguay, Chile, Uruguay, Brazil and Colombia are the teams that have booked their passage to the quarterfinals. 
The competition continues on Sunday. And that is it for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Giovanni, it is over to you. Fireworks this evening in the women's 100 meters, both semifinals and finals, it appears. That's right, really, really keen contests ahead. Shelley and Fraser Price, Elaine Thompson, Brianna Williams, and also Sharika Jackson as well. So three spots up for grabs, but only three will get that opportunity to represent the country in Tokyo. Interesting indeed, and we wait with bated breath. But that's it for now on your midday news report. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, the sports, and the production teams, have a good afternoon.